Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here and welcome to the Echo AR workshop. Today we're gonna to talk about how to build an AR VR app in 15 minutes or less. We're gonna talk about augmented reality, virtual reality, and how you can build applications really, really quickly. So thank you so much for joining. We're Echo AR, it's a cloud platform for augmented and virtual reality apps. We basically provide tools and network infrastructure for developers and companies to build AR VR applications at scale. I'm gonna start by saying hello. I'm Alon, founder of Echo AR. We're based in New York. I did my master's at computer science at Columbia University, specializing in AR and VR. I did my undergrad in computer science and electrical engineering, um, specializing in cloud. So I'm a certified nerd and a big believer in the AR VR space. Now, before we start, I really want to level set here a little bit. Um, we're going to throw these terms a lot, um, like augmented reality, virtual reality. So let's define them together in order to kind of level set everyone's kind of definitions. Virtual reality or VR is when everything around you is digital. You're fully immersed in a 3D environment, and everything you see is some computer-generated image or CGI that is being projected into your eyes through a headset or some kind of glasses. Um, your um, entire kind of sensory um, is being kind of controlled through um, through this device that's kind of um, kind of completely occludes your vision, and you're controlling um, the interactions with the controllers or with your hands, and sometimes it also kind of controls what you can hear. As opposed to augmented reality or AR, in which you still see the real world, but that world is being overlaid with CGI imagery and 3D content, you're looking at the world through some optical see-through, like glasses or a headset, or a camera see-through, like a phone or a tablet. But again, you can still see the real world. Um, a really good understanding of this is the amazing movie Space Jam, in which we have Michael Jordan being teleported into Looney Towns. Everything around him is a cartoon. Everything around him is kind of this um, CGI image that is basically interacting with bugs and all the other Looney Tunes in their own kind of environment, as opposed to what's happening in, uh, in the last thing, uh, in the last part of the movie, in which you have the Looney Tunes coming to us, interacting with um, um, Jordan and Bill Murray in a real world court, uh, basically kind of um playing in the real world and that's the biggest differentiation it's either us kind of teleporting ourselves into looney town or looney town is coming to us again the kind of comical understanding of ar and vr um another kind of real world examples that all of you probably know is something like pokemon go when people are running around interacting with digital monsters are not really there that's a really good example of augmented reality or for virtual reality, we have something like Beat Saber that you're kind of slashing cubes based on the rhythm of your music in a fully kind of CGI in a fully 3D environment that you can kind of can't see the real world through. Another example that is really close to my heart is, um, and the pun is definitely intended here, is my thesis project back at Columbia University. We took CT and MRI scans, converted them to 3D models, put them on these smart glasses called the Hollands for the physician to wear. And basically the physician would get a inside look at the patient's anatomy in real time. It was really an amazing experience. I got the opportunity to kind of scrub into surgery and basically give the physician this kind of 3D reference map of the patient's anatomy. It was an amazing use case of augmented reality. Um, but the problem was that I had to do something that I really, really hate um, in order to achieve that. And that's waking up early in the morning. I had to go to the hospital every day at like 6 a.m take those 2D scans, convert them to 3D models, rebuild the application, and put those on these smart glasses. And that process was so frustrating. It took so much time. Um, and as a developer, I only wanted to do two things, manage the assets and deliver them to an air device. And when talking to other developers building augmented and virtual reality applications for retail and shopping and data visualization and game, they all said the same thing. Um, there is no easy way to manage and deliver 3D data. Wait, if you think about it, this problem was already solved for 2D. Um, if you want to build a website, you can use something like Heroku as your kind of um, cloud platform. If you want to use uh, Parse or, or if you want to build a mobile app, you can use Parse or Firebase as your kind of backend as a service. So we went from web to mobile to now AR, VR, immersive, XR, 3D, call it whatever. Um, and question has to be asked, who's going to build that cloud platform for this new type of content? And you've guessed it, that's what we do at Echo AR. We are a cloud platform for 3D applications, basically providing tools and network infrastructure to build AR VR applications at scale. So we're super excited to be here, and thank you so much for joining. Um, today we're going to talk about, again, some concepts about augmented and virtual reality, see how they intersect in the cloud, show how to build applications, uh, and we're going to have a lot of fun. If you have any questions, feel free to write them in the live chat, and I'll try to respond. I see a lot of you already saying hello, so hello, everyone. 
um, really excited to be here. So think about it. The same way you don't need to be a web developer to update a blog post, you can just drag and drop an image or video. Suddenly they appear in web and mobile. And if I'm in New York and you're in California and we're both watching an episode on Netflix, we automatically get the best streaming experience. We translated these concepts into augmented virtual reality, basically providing you with a way to manage and deliver 3D data and get the best 3D streaming experience. And what's interesting here is this kind of bi-directional connection between content and data, as opposed to uh, web or mobile that you as a user can't move an image or a video on a website. You can definitely move a 3D couch across the room, and that needs to be updated on the cloud. So this is basically what we've built, this content management system and delivery network that is specific for 3D. Um, go to our website to register. Uh, if you're here from a hackathon or an event or a club, make sure to use the affiliated link that we shared with the organizers um, to basically get um, a perk uh, to kind of get our free pre uh, our premium tier kind of uh, features for free. So definitely check out this uh, with your event organizers. But you can always just register on our website. We have a generous free tier. Once you do that, you're going to get an API key. It's a key that allows you to kind of start building applications. And now we're going to see how you do that. So once you register on our website using the affiliated link uh, or through just directly on our website, you're going to get an API key, as I mentioned. This is mine. What you see here on the left is our console. And on the right, you just see my phone. Um, so I'm going to start with something super, super simple. I'm going to um, add some content to our cloud. So you can add your own files, like images, videos, 3D models. Or you can choose any of the kind of models that we have here in the library, or even use this search engine to put in any word you want to search for 3D models for free. Uh, I'm going to start with something simple. I'm going to throw in this Empire State of Building, posting it to our cloud. What happens right now is that we take that 3D model that is really suited for 3D printing, and we convert it so it works on Android and iOS, and magically even all these different ARVR platforms. Once it's done, I can see it right here. I can see the kind of 3D model of the Empire State Building. I can Open is um, the Stample app right here on my phone. It's available right here that you can just download. I'm going to plug in my API key. So pl plugging this key in the app. Data will stream from the cloud to the app. So the Empire State will kind of be delivered to my phone. Now you can see my apartment. The camera kind of recognizes the floor. And voila, the Empire State is here with me. And I can walk around it, walk inside it. Super, super simple. Now, what happens if I want to change this to something else? So instead of rebuilding an application and doing anything technical, I'm going to go back to the console. I'm going to delete the previous entry, upload something else, and that will automatically update in the app and across all platforms. So let's see that. So let's throw in this building instead. Same process occurs. We're taking the 3D model, kind of building it uh, again so it will work in augmented reality. Once that's done, let's plug in the same API key. Data will stream from the cloud to the device. And voila. Suddenly we see into the library state, we see this building. How simple is that? Now, I also mentioned that like we stream things across all platforms. So this was a native Android example, native mobile example. Um, we work with a company, for example, in the art agency space that they wanted to have you randomly walk into an art gallery, open a phone, and suddenly see things in AR without installing anything. Is that possible? Yes, it is. So with Echo AR, what you can do is you can click this button right here. It will open this QR code that you can scan. So if you're um, watching the stream live, scan this QR code. It should work for you as well. Just open um, kind of camera. Most cameras on iOS or um, Android already have this built-in QR code scanner. Scan this. If you, Again, if you're looking at this video live, it will redirect you to a website. You don't have to install anything. Uh, I'm going to kind of scan this. As you can see, it redirected me to a website. You can see the um, kind of. Um, you can kind of see the kind of 3D model right here. I'm going to click CNAR. The camera, again, will instantiate. And automatically, I'm able to see things in augmented reality. Look how simple is that. So there you go. I can see the building. I can place it around. Super simple. Let's move it a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Super simple. And here, again, you don't have to install anything. I just had to kind of um, open it through a website. And that's it. How cool is that? Uh, and again, you can scan it uh, yourself. And I'm going to leave it right here. Echo AR, we're going to stream this 3D model to your phone automatically. Oh, we have great reactions in the in the chat. That's fantastic. Um, so now that we've seen uh, mobile, web, let's see another example um, of how you can build applications. And later, we're going to dive into that. And that's Unity. It's a game engine a lot of developers love to use. So I'm going to open a sample Unity app. Our Unity SDK is right here. So you can like, download it. And we have like a bunch of um, kind of sample um, apps. We're going to talk about that later. So I'm going to open this Unity app. Um, super simple. Again, recognizes the floor. 
seeing the 3D model on the floor, very similar to what we had earlier. What if I want to change things in real time? For example, um, let's say I want to make this um, content animate. So I can click this button right here to kind of um, show the data panel. And I'm going to add things like, let's say, direction equals right. So this is a kind of key value database that you can add to your content. Uh, you can add anything you want. It doesn't have to be direction. It can be any key, any value. And there you go. It's only in real time. It starts to animate. How cool is that? Uh, if I want to make it, let's say, two times bigger, I can add scale equals two. Bam, suddenly it became two times bigger. And all I had to do is like, click a few buttons, and that's it. So super, super simple. And again, just to show you the power of the cloud, how cool it is that you can like change things in real time across all platforms. So all your users like suddenly automatically kind of have the same content being changed. Perfect. So we saw web, we saw mobile, now we saw Unity. Um, very, very cool and kind of really, really easy to build applications. Now let's see what else we can do. Every, all of the examples that we saw so far were based on surface detection. The camera recognizes a floor or and kind of kind of surface, and we'll overlay that with 3D models. That surface could be a floor, a table, a chair, a wall, whatever. But another uh, technology that we support is image recognition, basically allowing you to overlay content on top of images. So let's see how that works. Um, so for example, I can click this button right here to open the QR code. And now instead of doing C on the floor, I can click C on an image. I can scan this QR code. And again, if you're watching this live, you can scan this QR code as well with me. Just put your phone in front of it, have the QR code kind of read it, and then redirect it to a website. You don't have to install anything. And voila, camera instantiates automatically on the website. And now the 3D model that we have kind of overlays this QR code. Like it's kind of jumps out of my screen. Um, it's kind of being projected on top of the image, as opposed to what we had earlier, that it projects on the floor. Uh, really cool. Again, just different type of tracking. It can be really useful if you want to have uh, basically any image. So you can put your business card, and then you overlay it with videos. Or um, you can have a magazine, and you can kind of overlay that with an ad. Super simple. And now let's see how you can do that with kind of custom images as well. So. Um, up until now, we played around with 3D models, but I can also, as I mentioned, like upload a video. So let's do that. So I can just upload an MP4 file. Let's do that. And then now I'm going to put it on a specific image. So I'm going to click on an image, and I'm going to choose an image. There you go, just a PNG file. Uploading to our cloud, what happens right now is very similar to what we had earlier, but now we're kind of converting images and videos as opposed to a 3D model. Um, we have some reactions in the chat. Perfect, yeah. Really appreciate that you're loving it. Um, so we see the video right here. Uh, maybe also let's add another type of content. So I can also add things on specific locations. So for example, I can throw in this fox in New York. And this means that you can kind of build applications uh, based on locations. Uh, you can build applications based on locations. So you can build an app that if you open it in New York, you see the Empire State. But if you open it in San Francisco, you're going to see the Golden Gate Bridge. So super, super simple, but again, like another type of target that you can kind of place your content with. Um, so there you go. Suddenly we see this um, fox kind of standing right here, and specifically we tagged it in New York. And we tag this image in on, on this. So let's see if that works. I'm going to scan this QR code. And again, if you're watching this live, you can scan this with me. Redirect to a website. Again, you don't have to install anything. Once that is done, we're able to see that now the camera on my phone does not kind of um, detect the QR code anymore. Um, it doesn't kind of recognize it because we put a specific custom image. So if I click this image and it kind of open it, the camera recognizes this image. You see now it's like this custom image that I chose. And there you go. The video is playing. And I can kind of scale it up, scale it down with my fingers. But the video is kind of overlaying the, or like the new custom image, which is like really, really powerful. There you go. Awesome. So we saw mobile, web, um, Unity, surface detection. Um, image recognition. Let's see now well, what are the other things that we can do with a console and later dive into how to build a project with Unity, which will be a little more technical than all the things that we did so far. So what can we do as well? So we can change the theme as we just saw, uh, kind of switch around colors, uh, dark being the default. We have the downloads page, uh, the downloads menu that is going to have uh, have access to the sample apps, the SDK that you can build applications with if it's Unity or Java or Swift or Flutter. Um, we have some example code that we're going to review later in a link to our GitHub page. There's like really, really kind of really cool um, resources here. Um, like for example, our documentation is like really powerful. It has literally a step-by-step -step guide of everything we just did. So for example, how to add a 3D model, like everything is like in a GIF form. Really, really cool. I really recommend. I'm going to share that in the chat right here so you can kind of uh, gloss through it. Um, 
Another good resource that we have is our GitHub page. So this is a page filled with amazing examples of um, AR and VR that you can kind of um, play around with. So um, let me open a few of them to kind of share with you. But let's see, we have, let's do this one and this one, and let's do this one and maybe this one as well. There's like so many open source projects right here that you can just like, specifically if you're working on a hackathon, just like copy paste and start with, because they're really cool and they're kind of already pre-integrated with all of our tech. So for example, this is kind of a ele cool election demo with Unity. You can throw in like 3D models and images and kind of predict the result of the election or this kind of living room inside a living room in AR that you can kind of stream a movie in a virtual in a virtual um, living room, which is really cool. I'm going to share the link in a sec. Face swap, if you want to do some face changes, you can do that with Echo AR as well. Um, so many really cool examples. If you want to build an educational app, like showing people the solar system, you can do that. Here's another example of like a remote work. You can kind of project a person's face. Or um, here's another one that uses image detection that kind of brings images to life. So I'm going to share this link right here as well. So definitely kind of use this as a resource. Um, what else can we do? We have our Slack channel that is basically kind of uh, really useful to ask our team for any support. If you have any questions, I'll also be sure to kind of stick around there and answer any questions as well. And you can always email us and send us a tweet. Um, other stuff that you can do. So we already saw that you can kind of manage data uh, or maybe I'll send another extra link that you can kind of share um, 3D models. And there you go. Here's a 3D model um, that you can like watch right now if you go to this link with your phone. Um, so what else can we do? So we can manage data. That's the thing that we already saw. Um, and we can literally see um, the kind of um, data that is associated with every 3D model. But we also have this global database that we can kind of share data across all the app. Um, we have a company, for example, they were working on this murder mystery game, kind of this um, scavenger hunt. And they had different kind of objects associated with the first scenes, but they also had kind of data that is associated with all the scenes. And the subscription page, we have all the kind of your subscription. Uh, if you use the affiliate link from a hackathon, you're going to get this tier for free. So definitely check out that perk. Um, and we also have our plan kind of showing like how many API calls you're making, how much storage you're making, how much uh, bandwidth you're using. Uh, so definitely kind of check that out. Uh, we have a question if it implements in a React JS. Yeah, you can use that in React. Uh, we have an example right here for, for React Native, for example, and like all these different platforms, like again, Java, Swift, Flutter. Um, and also in our documentation, we have a RESTful API that you can kind of choose to use with any platform out there. If, even if we don't have an SDK for you can kind of use the RESTful API. Location is a cool page, shows you the, the distribution of content. Like remember, we added that Fox in New York, so it's, you can see that it's right here. You see the server coverage. Um, you can see in the security page, you can add people to your team. So if you're building a project as a team, you can kind of add extra users. That's really powerful. Um, Insights is a really cool page, shows you again, like some kind of information and analytics about your uh, app. For example, we um, stream the apartment building. So there you go. We see a spike in usage and kind of that this is the, the 3D model that we used most so far. We see some information about our project that is really useful. We can see the distribution of users. Tutorials is a really cool, powerful page that shows you like some frequently asked questions, a link to GitHub or a link to our documentation, and kind of um, some of the projects that we already saw earlier that you can kind of play around with and they're already open source and you can kind of play around with them and kind of expand on them. Inspiration page is my favorite page. It is filled with amazing examples of things that you can build in AR and VR and some of them are powered by Echo AR, like the art uh, installation that I mentioned or the murder mystery game or this kind of 5G project that we did with Horizon. So many really, really cool projects for military use and advertising and shopping and retail and data navigation and games and COVID-19. These are some really cool projects that people did around COVID-19. You should definitely check them out. Um, and like, there's so many projects here that use, again, surface detection or image recognition uh, for education or travel or really, really cool stuff like this mask visualizer. So definitely kind of explore this page to get a sense of what you can build in augmented and virtual reality. And if you kind of build a project and you send it us, uh, you send it to us, we will be happy to kind of, uh, kind of feature it for everyone and kind of share it with the community. So definitely kind of um, share um, your project. And I'm so looking forward to see where you're all going to build. Perfect. So we've played around with the console. You saw how we can add data, how we can manage data, how we can kind of deliver it and kind of optimize that and see um, content like really, really fast. Now let's turn into a more technical part of the workshop and talk about how to build applications using a game engine called Unity. 
So, um, in the downloads menu, as I mentioned, you have our Unity SDK. You just click that, you download our SDK. It's a file. Once you double click that in Unity, it's going to be added to your project. This is Unity. As I mentioned, again, it's a game engine. A lot of developers love to use to build applications. It's super easy to learn, um, but does require some coding. Um, we have an empty scene right here. When you add our U Unity SDK, you're going to get this Echo AR folder. If you double click that and go to the examples, you're going to see the sample scene. Again, it's an empty scene. There's nothing here. Um, but if I click the Echo AR game object and I add our uh, API key and press play, data will stream from the cloud to the game engine, which is really, really cool. And we'll be able to see all these 3D content kind of populate the 3D scene. So there you go. Now we're seeing the building is rotating, the fox is kind of occluded by the building, and the video is playing automatically. Very cool, very easy. I'm going to delete the video because it's playing in my ear, but check out how I'm deleting in the console. Automatically, it disappears from the game engine. Or if I want to move the fox, we already know how to do that. I'm going to do like x equals 10 to move it 10 feet away. There you go, suddenly it moved. Very, very easy. Um, and what else is I can do is like if I pause, like if I stop this application from running, everything disappears. So again, the cool thing about it, the data comes from the cloud. It's not persisting on memory. It's not going to make your app really, really big. It's actually making it really, really small because the assets are not really there. They coming, they're coming from the cloud. Only when you restart the application, data again will stream from the cloud to the game engine. Again, reassuring that your app will be super, super small. The cool thing about it is that when things return, we can see that the building is still rotating. The, uh, Fox is still 10 feet away. So what we have here is a stateful content management, system, a content management system, a stateful CMS. Basically, it remembers the state of the object and kind of returns the scene to its original form. Um, and this is, again, a really powerful thing that you can construct the scene and then kind of recreate it. Uh, but now let's um, see what we can do in order to kind of change things or kind of, um, let's say we want to add features or whatnot. So I'm going to delete the building. I'm going to move the Fox back to the center. There we go. We're going to see. We're going to see that here. So we have Arctic Fox right here. And now let's say we want to add some content or we want to add some features or whatnot. So the cool thing about Echo AR is that every kind of 3D model, every kind of 3D video or image has the Echo AR custom behavior script attached to it. It's a C-sharp script in Unity format that we see allows you to kind of, that is attached to every, con like to every kind of content that is being instantiated. And you can use that to add features. Um, so let's see how that works. So I'm going to open that script right here. Again, um, it's in c -sharp, but if you know Java or any other object-oriented language, you should be good. Um, it has two major functions. Um, one is the start function, evident by its name, happens when you start the application. Another function is the update function. Um, this is a really cool function. Basically, it happens every single frame. Remember, you're coding in 3D now. This means there's a kind of um, there is a scene running. There's um, this video being rendered on your phone. And this function is being kind of instantiated every single frame. This means that, again, remember your CS fundamentals. Make sure that this function does not hang or get stuck, that the complexity is really good. Because if it does, your entire application will um, get stuck or will just hang. So definitely kind of make sure that this is well optimized. But let's start with something simple. Um, we have this snippet of code right here. Then let's review it together. So we're asking, do I have any additional data? If I do, do I have any additional data called name? If so, set the name of the object to that name. Super simple. So let's see how that works. So now we have a fox called Arctic Fox. If I change, if I give it a name, as again, as I mentioned, this data could be anything you want. So I'm going to like just write name. And I'm going to give it a name. Let's call it Kevin. It's a good name for a fox. And then if I press play, again, data will stream from the cloud to the game engine. But now it has that extra kind of feature that it will check for the name in the beginning and set the name of the fox that name. So there you go. Now we have Kevin the fox. How easy is that? So this is obviously a simple example, but it's to show that you can kind of um, use the data that is being streamed to the game engine to enable or disable if flows, check for stuff, and enable or disable features. Really, really cool stuff. Now, if I change this, uh, the name to Sam, Nothing happens. Why is that? Because that snippet of code only happens when we start the application. So if I'll restart the application, now the data will be reinstantiated. They'll check it again. And there you go. Now we have CM the Fox. Perfect. But what happens if you want this to happen every single frame? Uh, and you've guessed it. We're going to kind of move this from the start function to the update function. There we go. So now every single frame, we're going to ask, do I have any initial data? If I do, do I have a name? And if so, let's set that name to the name of the object. Let's click play again. Data will stream from the cloud to the device. We're going to see Sam the Fox right here in front of us. 
And then if you want to change its name, we should expect it to kind of change automatically. So there you go, CM the Fox is here. And now if I change this to Kevin, bam, now it's Kevin. How easy is that? Again, a really, really simple example. So now we're going to transition into a more complicated example that we can add features. We're going to build a COVID visualizer that, again, is really open sourced and like you can uh, use um, you can use it on um, um, through our GitHub. On our GitHub page, we have that example. You can just take it, but I'm going to recreate it now with you all. Uh, we have a question. Does that work? Yeah, it definitely works with Unity 2020. Um, you don't have to downgrade. We definitely recommend um, like 2019 long-term support because I think it's the stablest version, but you can definitely use 2020 and that's totally fine. Uh, great question. Um, I'm specifically using 2019.2. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to upload uh, some different content. I'm going to throw in um, a file specifically for my computer just to show you that you can throw in 3D models. I'm going to throw in this um, 3D model. And I'm also going to give it um, this kind of CSV file, this Excel file, um, that basically has all these keys and values already preloaded. Our system will kind of parse that data and kind of plug in these uh, keys and values automatically so you don't have to kind of type them manually. So know that this is another cool feature that you can have. And I'm also going to swap the custom behavior script under the hood to basically allow for different um, kind of features. So let's do that. So I'm going to replace that. Perfect. So now the custom behavior script is much more interesting. It's going to have more meat on it. So let's kind of review it together. Um, well, what do we have here? So we have the script. It has, certainly has some array of continents. It has a dictionary. It has this data structure. It has the start function right here that looks exactly the same. Uh, we can see that the, built, that the Earth, like our blue planet right here, is already kind of rendered into the cloud. And we can also see that all these kind of um, keys and values that I uploaded with the content are already here, which is perfect. Um, back here, the, the update function is much more interesting. Um, check this out. It has like so many more things. For example, we're asking, do I have any additional data? If I do, do I have uh, a scale? If so, let's kind of parse that out into an integer. Um, then let's iterate over all continents. If I have information about a continent, let's parse the number that is associated as the number of cases of COVID in that continent. If I have a graph, let's set that size of the graph based on the number uh, that we just got. If not, let's create a graph. Let's create a cylinder, give it a color, give it a name, give it a location and a size. Um, let's add a text to it as well. And if we don't have any information, let's just delete that graph. So let's see what that does when we press play. Again, data will stream from the cloud to the device. We should see our building, and voila, check this out. How cool is that? We have the kind of Earth spinning, and we have all this information about all these kind of continents right here. And again, these were instantiated through code. So now if I change things on our console, for example, let's say I want to say that the number of cases in Antarctica just spiked, bam, automatically it changes. If I delete Antarctica, it deletes here again. So this is, again, a really cool example of how you can build something in AR and kind of play around with it. You can take this project, as I mentioned, it's open source on our GitHub page, and expand on it. You can connect this project to some third-party API, let's say the World Health Organization or uh, like the WHO, and have, instead of you putting these numbers kind of uh, manually, you can have real-time numbers through API calls and kind of post those numbers uh, in real time. That sounds like a really winning project for a hackathon that you kind of um, expand on this example and kind of show actual real real-world example is kind of updating in real time. And then you can build this in augmented reality and see it around you, which is really, really cool. Perfect. And again, when I stop, everything kind of disappears. Um, perfect. So let's recap. What did we see so far? So we saw examples of how you can build applications for mobile, for web, for Unity. We doubled down on Unity and like showed how you can kind of use the game engine. Everything we did in the beginning of the workshop was really non-technical, like dragging and dropping things, scanning QR codes, putting your API can only see things on the floor. So even the communicators among us who are not that technical can build applications really, really quickly. And we built story and deliver that content all over the world. And to all devices, you as a developer are going to save time and money in building your application. Content creators need no technical skills to do that. And companies can literally kind of scale their applications all over the world and send data all over the world. We talked about use cases like healthcare and ads and tourism and shopping and um, home design. We saw the inspiration page that is filled with amazing examples of AR and VR. And I'm so looking forward to see what you're going to build 
um, and could be added to the inspiration page. A little bit more about us as a company, we won a bunch of awards and we are kind of sponsored by the, um, kind of backed by the most amazing investors in the country, like Match Ventures and Techstars and Verizon. And we were featured in all these amazing events. We love to say that we power applications um, across all platforms. So kind of really excited to see what you're all gonna build with augmented and virtual reality powered by Echo AR. Um, Cause again, you're limited only by imagination. And if you start kind of playing around with 3D and kind of start playing with AR and VR, um, the sky's the limit, literally. So make sure you register and, or use the affiliated link that you have through your kind of um, organizers of the event. Um, thank you so much for being here. Um, if you have any questions, again, we're going to um, use the, the Slack link to kind of join our, our Slack to kind of ask any questions. I'll kind of stick around there to answer. Uh, but make sure you kind of register to get your API key. Thank you so much for being in this workshop. I had a blast. Um, again, feel free to kind of reach out and start building amazing, amazing things. Really kind of um, really kind of looking forward to see what you're going to build. This is definitely the time to build AR VR applications, and you're in the right spot and have the resources. So thank you so much for everyone for being here. And if you have questions, please write them down in the chat. I'm happy to answer. So um, let's see. Sammy is asking. Um, So Sammy, so if you already registered, you can either register with a different email using that code or uh, reach out to our support team on Slack and tell them your API key and they'll upgrade you. Um, oh, thanks everyone. Um, yeah, I had a great time. Thank you so much as well. Um, so thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for the positive responses. Really enjoyed um, kind of engaging with you all. Again, stay safe, healthy, and sane during these troubling times and start building amazing applications with AR. Really looking forward to see what you're gonna build. Thank you so much, everyone, and start building. Have a good one.